Considering China's huge shipbuilding capacity, it might well make sense to pursue two distinct new generation carrier designs. The shift to nuclear power for China's fourth carrier is hugely significant. Nuclear propulsion will give the Type 004 effectively unlimited range. It will also help meet the power generation requirements of ever-improving sensors and other mission systems. Recent imagery indicates that China is progressing with work on a new aircraft carrier, its fourth, which is expected by many sources to introduce nuclear propulsion. Intriguingly, however, China is reportedly also working in parallel on another new carrier, nuclear propulsion for China's Type 004 aircraft carrier would represent a leap in naval capability and another step toward parity with the US. A new detail that is now visible of the makings of the ship's hull structure would appear to directly support this. The development comes just a week after the People's Liberation Army Navy commissioned its first domestically produced carrier the Fujian. Recent imagery indicates that China is progressing with work on a new aircraft carrier, imagery of the new carrier, commonly referred to as the Type 004, shows the vessel taking shape at Dalian Shipyard in China's Liaoning Province. Visible now is what looks to be a reactor containment structure, which would be a key indicator of its propulsion system. The structure is broadly similar to that which is found in US nuclear-powered supercarriers, and there is a general consensus that what we can see here is related to the future installation of a nuclear reactor. Renderings related to the Type 004 design that have emerged in the past have shown similarities to the US Navy's Ford class, as well as France's future new generation aircraft carrier, both of which are nuclear powered. In its latest assessment of Chinese military power, the Pentagon doesn't explicitly mention a nuclear powered carrier but does note that China's next generation of carriers will be characterized by greater endurance, which will increase the striking power of a potential PLA Navy carrier battlegroup when deployed to areas beyond the PRC's immediate periphery. Almost exactly a year ago, evidence emerged that China had constructed a land-based prototype nuclear reactor suitable for a large surface warship. The so-called Dragon Mike project is located at a mountain site outside the city of Leshan, in Sichuan province. The shift to nuclear power for China's fourth carrier is hugely significant. Nuclear propulsion will give the Type 004 effectively unlimited range. It will also help meet the power generation requirements of ever-improving sensors and other mission systems. A nuclear-powered supercarrier would go a long way toward closing the technical gap with the US Navy, and would see China join France as the only other nation operating a nuclear-powered flattop. Previous satellite imagery confirmed that construction work on the carrier was underway in Dalian before May 2024, when a module, a section of the flight deck, first appeared in satellite imagery. Apparently evident in the module were trenches for catapult tracks, suggesting that the Type 004 will have two waste catapults, in addition to the two bow catapults. This would match the arrangement of the Nimitz and Ford classes and would add an extra catapult compared with China's third carrier, the Type 003 Fujian, which has a single catapult in the waist position. The Type 004 will presumably be equipped with an advanced electromagnetic aircraft launch system. In other respects, too, the Type 004 is expected to be an overall more advanced design than Liaoning and Shandong, which are by now well established with the PLA Navy fleet, as well as the Fujian. Like Fujian and in contrast to the two previous carriers the Type 004 will be equipped to launch aircraft via catapults. Catapults offer numerous advantages, especially when it comes to launching aircraft at higher gross weights, which translates to larger fuel and ordnance loads. They can also generally accommodate a wider array of aircraft types. This includes larger and slower designs, like the KJ-600 carrier-based airborne early warning and control aircraft as well as smaller ones such as drones. As well as the aforementioned KJ-600, the Type 004S air wing will likely include the J-35 stealth fighter, supported by advanced developments of the J-15 multi-role fighter, including an electronic warfare variant. The carrier is also likely to embark various drones, such as navalized versions of the GJ-11 UCAV, plus helicopters.
Intriguingly, however, China is reportedly also working in parallel on another new carrier, this one being conventionally powered. Unconfirmed reports suggest that, in addition to the Type 004 at Dalian, China is poised to start working on a conventionally powered carrier at Jiangnan in Shanghai. This location would make sense in as much as this was the yard that built the Fujian. If these reports are correct, the finished product would likely be an improved Type 003 design. Considering China's huge shipbuilding capacity, it might well make sense to pursue two distinct new generation carrier designs. An improved Type 003 which some observers have begun to dub Type 003A would offer the advantages of a proven design and lower costs, while the more ambitious Type 004 would be more expensive and higher risk. There's also an argument that China doesn't necessarily need nuclear-powered carriers for many of its missions. While a nuclear-powered carrier would be a huge advantage for sustained blue water operations across the globe, for contingencies closer to home, such as in the Taiwan Strait, and even in the disputed South China Sea, a force of conventionally powered flattops is still highly relevant. Conventionally powered carriers have the added advantage that they can be built more quickly and fielded in greater numbers given a set budget, although they are more dependent on a steady supply train, which can be vulnerable in a time of conflict. For its part, even a nuclear-powered carrier still requires a steady supply of other supplies, including fuel for its air wing and for its escorts. At the same time, it should be noted that China is also working to introduce a number of very large big-deck amphibious assault ships, referred to as the Type 076. Each will feature at least one electromagnetic catapult that is expected to be primarily used to launch drones, these would appear to be tailor-made for missions directed against Taiwan, as well as for power projection in the South China Sea. Continued construction work on what is increasingly likely to be a nuclear-powered carrier, and the possibility of another type of conventional flattop in the works, highlight China's high ambitions as a naval power and the resources they are willing to invest to achieve their maritime vision.